Hello and welcome to IT Security Labs. Today we're completing a machine called TOC2. This is by Polo Mints on Try Hack Me. This is a wonderful machine that is going to teach us some race conditions. You will get a hint from the machine right here that you need to watch a video that will show you what race conditions are. You get to understand how they work and also how to use this script here. In this case, we're going to do it in a fun to do way where we enumerate the machine, find our way in, then exploit it with using race conditions. So without wasting time, let's get started here. First, my IP address is this one. So I like to start by pinging the machine to make sure that I can get there. And as you can see, I can get there. Then let's do an nmap minus a for an aggressive scan so that we can enumerate all the services that are happening there all right so as you can see our mmap scan is complete and we have two ports port 22 and port 80. in this case we don't waste time we notice that we have robots.txt and we also have cms install.php so we go to port 80 and figure out what's on robots.txt and also enumerate that further. So let's open our browser. Just go there. So this is our main site. It says sorry under construction. Sorry for the inconvenience, but management, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you are here to do something, just in case, we have a username and password. We don't know what to use this one for yet. So let's save it later open quick notes just going to save my information here that i'm finding on my system this is by hunter so that's another user that we found as well hunter all right let's check robots to text that we just saw Okay, so we're disallowing this. But as we want to go there, there's also a note to self setting up the CMS. So this one is talking about setting it up in that database CMS DB. So this looks like a database information here. So the site is ready by Wednesday. So let's put this one here. All right, now that we have that information, every time I see CMS, I always want to figure out, okay, what version is it? And in this case, they gave me the version. So as usual, I'll copy the version in a browser and type exploit. Let's figure out is, are there known exploits for any version? If you see any new application that is running with a version, you always want to check out. And in this case, exploit DB, has the exact version that we want and if you open this exploit here give it a second you will notice that it will give us a full description telling us exactly how to exploit it uh, so i encourage you to spend some time reading it but it's saying during the installation process we can take over the time zone parameter and inject this right here this will give us command injection on the system. So that's pretty much what this is. So I read about this and this is how we do it. We go here. Let's go through the installation process by going to that link. There we go. And as you can see, it's asking us to begin the installation. We keep our language in English, not in advanced mode. Let's go next. So let's just finish the installation for this uh, web application. Okay, install, and there's some default stuff here. We just say next, and here is where we need to abuse it. Here it's asking for our time zone. We need to go back to our exploit, and it explains that we instead of putting the time zone, we need to inject this right here in, in place of time zone. So let's go back here. Uh, we will have to turn our website on, but before that, let's fill out more information here. Let's give it more information. 
database name, username, and password. From our initial enumeration, remember we have CMS user. So our username is CMS user, database CMS DB, and our password is dev pass. I'm pretty sure we can use any passwords that we want here, but I'm just using what we have just in case. Then here it says we need to exploit this part here according to our exploit. So let's start our burp. Interception on. I'm using the latest version of burp. So it comes with its own Chromium browser. So I don't need to turn on Foxy Proxy anymore. So now if I say next, it will intercept our request. And according to our exploit, we need to replace time zone with this code here. So this is a very simple attack, I would say. So times when equals UTC and whatever that is, we're going to replace it with that. Then we can forward the request. And forward again. Once our, our site loads, we then turn off our proxy and proceed to the next step. Let's see. There we go. So interception off. We don't need burp anymore. Here is uh, this doesn't matter. I'm just going to use the same for all the fields because I don't think we'll be using that. We already got our exploit to work. So according to here now, should now be able to go to the target path and go to config php and run this here so let's make sure we do that yeah let's choose english or well, another language who cares i'll name it subscribe any name works here all right next if this is your first time on my channel, please consider liking and subscribing. We do this uh, every week. I do live streams on Sundays at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. And if you are someone new and you just want to learn, uh, just join me. It's a lot of fun learning and I'm still learning a lot as well. And we've been, I've been doing this for a while now and I've learned a lot by just sharing with people. So if you are new and you just want to hang out, uh, please subscribe and also join me on Sundays at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. All right, so it's done here. Let's go to, it says visit your website. We can just do that. There's also an admin panel. So we can check that one out later. But for now, this is the site. According to our exploit, we need to visit this path. So I'm just going to copy that from my main site here. I'm going to go to config PHP and run those two commands. So as you can see, we have command injection. So now we can see that uh, if I remove this, should be able to go to cat slash AT pass WD. And I can, I can see all the users that are in there. Okay, so if you look closely, you notice that we have a user Frank right here. So now we know we have a one user. I did spend some time wasting, I wasted some time here. I tried to do my Python reverse shell, even one liners, they did not work. But usually with command injection, you can come here and even do use wget to upload PHP. I tried everything. I think I needed to encode things. So I'll still try it later, but um, after I gave up, since I found a user Frank, let's just use Hydra and try to brute force SSH for Frank. So I, I used Hydra for that and I'll show you what it looks like here. So if you just run Hydra with uh, minus L and user Frank, uh, then minus P and point it to rocky the text, 
this time we need to point to the right IP address. In this case, um, my IP address changed, so I need to change this to the new one. That is a mess. Okay, so now what we're doing is brute forcing for Frank. I don't like brute forcing, but in this case, it took me almost an hour to get here, so we brute forced it just to see since we're the user. And this doesn't take a long time, actually. It's very quick, as you will see here. If you give it a second. There we go. So we got our user, Frank, and password. That was very quick. So maybe this is how it was intended. We find the user through command injection, then we will brute force for the user. So now that we have a user, Frank, and password is a password, we can SSH. SSH into this IP address. And yes, we want to and password. And we're in. It's Frank. All right, so I'm going to clear that screen. First thing that I do is ls minus la. See, what do I have here is Frank. I see already there's something called root access here. It's a directory. That's interesting. We have bash history. So I'm not going to even waste time. Let's go there. Root access. What are they talking about? CD root access. Let's find out uh, ls minus la. What's in here? We have a read creds and we have root password backup. And we also have the uncompiled read creds file. So if we do a cat read creds, this right here shows us that we have something similar to what this video talks about. This is the video that was referenced by um, Paula Mintz here as part of the hints that we have. So I watched this before I did, did the machine. It's identical to what you will see right here. You see, they're even using ARG1. It's exactly the same thing right here. This brings us to what is this? What is really happening? This is race conditions. I encourage you to actually go and watch this video. To make sure that you understand how race conditions work. Just in case I don't explain them well here. But what, what we're doing here is if somebody writes an application and it's referencing a file, in this case, we are referencing this file and we are sleeping for one second, then uh, also printing this message if the file was not the correct one. That one second when it sleeps, you can actually introduce this tool here, a rename tool. So what we can do is we can rename the file that is being referenced by a script and have the script read that file instead. In this case, if this script reads that file at the right time and where we are also executing the original uh, read creds, we should be able to read the credentials. In this case, read creds is being run against this password backup here. So let me show you what it looks like when you're running read creds with password backup. So if you say read creds, root password backup this is what we get cannot open root password backup our goal is to open that root password backup first thing that we need to do is let's create another random file i'm just following exactly what uh, the video shows you so make sure to watch that i'm naming this pond so now that i have my new file in the same place what I can do is I can try to do this with creds against pond. There's nothing in my pond, so nothing comes back up. But if we're running it against this file, it will be able to see the password. So what we're going to do is we're going to introduce another file. In this case, this is going to be the uncompiled rename this is what is going to be renaming my file that i created to this name so that we can feed the fake file to the script then the next time it reads it again it will be able to uh, see my file so let me just say uh, nano what is this name uh, rename.c i'm name, name it the same way 
so it's not com confusing to people. Then I'll just paste everything in here. Let's save it. Right. So now that I have my rename.c here, I just need to compile this rename.c to actually run. So I can say gcc minus output rename. I'm just going to name it rename and rename.c. So we can compile it right here. It's rename. This will take a second. Right. So now if I do an ls, here's my rename. So here's what I want to do. I want to, my, to run my rename against my fake file. And also I wanted to rename this file. So this is where the rest condition is going to come in place here. Enter. So this is going to hang here. I'm going to ignore that section. Then I'll open a new session and sign in as Frank. The reason why I'm opening a new session is because this one is actually, this is going to be renaming my, my uh, file over and over again. Then I'll come here and I'll do an ls again, cd root access ls. In this time, let's run read creds against the real file. Well, the real file, depending on when we run this, we could be running it against my fake file, or we could be running it against my real file, or the risk condition matches. In this case, the Cisco matches, and we should be able to see, okay? So it's a matter of just keep trying until, and we we'll hope we hit a jackpot here. Yes, so I did it three times, and here's the credential. So this was the rest condition uh, privilege escalation. Switch user to root. We should be able to just uh, sign in with that password that we just got. Now, you see root.txt here, and the flag was somewhere else. So this was the rest condition machine. I encourage you to spend some time uh, watching this video. In this case, our machine does exactly what this video explains. And I thought this was a lot of fun. So thank you very much for joining me. If you like this stuff, please like and subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Thank you.